Hi, mathematicians. I hope you're having a great day on day three of digital learning. Miss Bell and I have been talking and we miss you guys so much, but we're so proud of the hard work that you're putting in. Um, and we look forward to seeing you really, really soon. So hopefully you have a good routine down for math by now, but I will read through the slides. So whatever's been working for you, if you want to watch the whole video first or watch and pause while you go through the slides or do the slides first, however you like, just be sure that you watch the whole lesson video that you're watching right now and that you've gone through all of the slides. And if there's anything during the lesson on the video or on the slides that you don't understand or you get confused by, please reach out to me or Miss Bell um, so that we can help you to understand. Um, okay, so I want you to start on the day three slides and um, I'm updating the slides each day so it might look a little bit different when you go to cross content to log in, but whatever measurement slides are at the very top of your cross math page, that is the one that you need to click into. So um, I'm just updating the preview slides we did and changing them a little bit. So I'm kind of doing those day by day. But if you have trouble finding them, let us know. So starting on day three, I want you to go ahead and pause while you do your estimation 180. Today you're going to be estimating those cheese balls again. I hope you are using the estimation 180s from the past two days to help make even better estimates each day. So go ahead and pause the video, do your estimation 180, and then come right back. Okay, I hope you were close in your estimates today. Um, we're going to continue talking about measurement. Today we're going to be talking about length and distance. And we are going to go through the customary units of measure and the metric units of measure, just like we've done for capacity and mass earlier in the week. Okay, so first of all, what is length? We all know what length is, right? It's when you measure how long something is um, or how tall something is. When you go to the doctor and they take your measurements every year for your yearly checkup there, measuring to see how long you are, how tall you are. The other thing we measure with length is distance. And the distance is how far apart or how much space is between two things. So you might measure the distance between your house and Arcado. Or you might measure the distance between your house and your grandmother's house. And we're going to talk about the units that you would use to measure both of those things. All right, so you should be looking now at a slide that has a ruler on it. And we're going to start talking about some of our units for length. Now, just like with capacity and mass, we have two different systems for measurement. We have the customary system, which is what we use here in the United States. And there's also the metric system, which is what almost everybody else in the world uses. And the metric system tends to make a little bit more sense. It's easier to convert. They use a lot of hundreds and thousands, which are easier to go back and forth between. Um, customary system is a little bit trickier, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So the smallest metric unit of distance or length is a centimeter. And a centimeter is really, 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 really small. It is a little bit smaller than half an inch. Um, and another way we can think about this is if you think of a whole inch, there are about two and 54 hundredths of a centimeter in one inch. And on your slide, you'll see a ruler. And at the top of the ruler is inches. On the bottom is centimeters. And you can see that there's just about two and a half centimeters in one inch. So that just lets us know that centimeters are small. They're smaller even than an inch. So can you think of some things that you might measure in centimeters? Hmm, maybe you can find some things around your house. Hopefully some of you have some rulers or yardsticks or meter sticks around your house and you can get some practice measuring. Too bad we didn't think to bring rulers home last week. Oh well. You might also be able to find some online that you can print out and cut out um, to practice measuring things around the house. All right, so go to the next slide. You should see a picture of a doorknob and a ruler. The next metric unit for measuring distance is a meter. And a meter is made up of 100 centimeters. 
And if you can picture in your house, this is something everybody should be able to see. If you look at a door in your house and you look at the doorknob, the distance between the doorknob and the floor is about one meter. So that's just kind of something you can keep in mind to help you picture what a meter is equal to. All right, if you click to the next slide, you'll see a football field. And this visual is helping us with a kilometer. If we have a thousand meters, we have what we call a kilometer, and we abbreviate that KM. I forgot to tell you the abbreviations. Meter, we abbreviate with a lowercase m, and centimeter, a lowercase cm. So a kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So this is a much bigger unit of measurement. And we use it to measure things that are longer. We might use it to measure the distance between your house and Walmart or your house and school. Now again, we don't really use kilometers here in the United States, but that is the type of distance you would measure in kilometers. Now there is a picture of a football field on your slide and I want you to picture 10 football fields. That's a long, long, long way. That's about how big a kilometer is. So between centimeter to meter to kilometer, we've gotten a lot bigger. Each one of those units is bigger than the one before it. Okay, on your next slide, we're gonna start talking about the customary units for length and distance. And these are the things that you will be more used to measuring with. Now, the smallest customary unit of length is an inch. And most of you know what an inch is. We've used rulers before. Um, we can picture that. You can also picture a small paper clip, um, which remember the other day we learned has about the mass of one gram or one ounce. It also has a length of about one inch. Um, if we put 12 inches together, we get what you guys picture a ruler that we've used lots in class in third grade and fourth grade. Um, 12 inches is equal to one foot. And if we write inch um, in an abbreviation, we write I-N, and for foot, we do F-T. Hold on one second. McKenna's trash alarm is going out. It's time for specials. Okay, um, so we use feet and inches to measure how tall you are. When you go to the doctor, they might say, wow, you are four feet, seven inches. You've grown three inches since your last checkup or something like that. All right, so the next customary unit for length is a yard, and a yard is equal to three feet. Now, this is about how long a baseball bat is. Um, and if you're thinking of comparing this to a metric unit, a yard is similar to a meter. They're about the same. Okay, now, our biggest measurement for distance or length with customary is a mile. And most of you are familiar with maybe walking a mile, running a mile. You know about how long that is. Um, if you went outside and walked, maybe you can do this today if the weather is not rainy. If you walk for about... 20 minutes, you probably walked about a mile. And a mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So you can tell that feet are a lot smaller than a mile. Um, a mile is also equal to 1,760 yards. So that just helps us to see that the inch is the smallest, then the foot, then the yard, then the mile. Okay. So on your slide, you're going to see a chart, and I want you to wait to fill that in until after I model what I'm about to model for you um, on the board behind me. So let me get my, like, let me move my poster over where you can see it a little bit better. So this chart is not the same one that's on your slide. I want to show you how to do this one, and then you can practice filling in the one that's on your slide. So remember this week, we need to know how to go back and forth between different units. We need to convert. So today we're gonna look at feet and yards. And if you remember from just a minute ago on the slide, one yard is equal to three feet, okay? So three feet is about the distance of a baseball bat. That's one yard. So looking at our chart, we need to figure out if we are given the number of feet, how many yards do we have? And if we're given the number of yards, 
How many feet do we have? So looking here, we already know that three feet is equal to one yard. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in right there. And what we want to start noticing is some kind of a relationship between the numbers here. Is there anything we can multiply or divide by every time to get the other number? So let's look at our next one. We have four yards. How many feet would that be? Think about that for a minute. How many yards is in one, I'm sorry, how many feet is in one yard? Three. And if I have four of those, four yards, so four times three feet, I'm going to get 12. So there are 12 feet in one yard. Now notice I multiplied the yards by three to get the feet. So now my yard is missing. So I'm going to have to go from feet to yard. So I'm going to have to do the opposite of that. So if I have six feet, I'm going to divide that by three to get two. So if I have two yards, it's the same as six feet because two times three equals six. All right, 10 yards. I just realized that's going to be kind of a hard one because it's not going to come out exact. Let's change that to 18. Oh wait, no, that'll work. Sorry, Miss Cross is thinking about it backwards. Let's stick with 10. If we have 10 yards, we need to multiply that by 3 because there are 3 feet in each of those yards. So we multiply 3 by 10 and we get 30. So there are 30 feet in 10 yards. And finally, if we had 15 feet, how many yards would that be? Remember, we have more feet than yards, so we need to divide our feet by 3 to get our yards. So if we had 15 feet, we have 5 yards. Okay? So try and do what I just did on the chart on your slide to see if you can fill in all of those blanks. And after that, we're going to go to the next slide to look at a couple of problems before you practice some on your own. All right, so... On our next slide, if Marilyn has three yards of fabric, how many feet does she have? So we're doing the same thing we did on the chart, but now we're thinking about a word problem. So on my chart, I already have up here, Marilyn had three yards. How many feet would that be? We're going to think about the same thing we did up here because the yards are smaller than the feet. We need to multiply the yards to get the feet. So we're going to multiply three yards times three, and we're going to get nine feet. Okay, now this one's a little bit trickier. If she wants to sew a pattern that requires six and a half yards of fabric, how many feet will she need? What do we do with that half? Hmm. Let's see, we're going to try and multiply each of these by three because we're going to need to do our six times three and our one half times three. So if you remember, six times three is equal to 18. And three times one half. Remember how to multiply fractions by a whole number? We're just going to multiply our numerator by three and keep our denominator, we didn't change our denominator. Now if we have three halves, we hopefully notice that that is an improper fraction and we're going to remember how to turn that into a mixed number. So I'm going to take the whole out, which would be two halves, so that would be one, and if we take two away from three, we have one half left. So now I've got to take this 18 and this one and a half and put it together and I get 19 and one half feet. All right, so if that went too fast or you got lost or confused, just pause the video, go back and watch it again. Um, for your practice today, you're gonna to look at some problems, some different measurements, and you're going to decide what is the best unit for that measurement. So for example, would we say that Miss Cross is five inches tall? 
or five feet tall? Which one makes the most sense? So you're gonna go under content, under cross math, and you're going to select, it's called measurement. Uh, I think it's called measurement DLD3 practice. And you're going to either download that and print it, or um, you can copy and paste it into your Google Drive, or you can just number your Google Drive for Math DLD3 and type in your answers. Don't forget to read your summary slide to see if there's any memes today. And I hope you guys have fun with math today. I hope you're doing some measurement around your house and helping maybe with some chores that might involve measurement. And um, I will see you soon. Bye.